Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing moon photography, moon pictures. Now for this video, I'm going to do some photos like this as the moon is rising with a little bit of ambient light, which to me looks awesome. Uh, for that, you can use a, a zoom lens. You do want something to make the moon look bigger. But we're also going to wait until the sky is dark and then try to get some close-ups with some really fine detail of the craters and everything that happens on the moon. Maybe we'll see some ships going back and forth. But the first thing we need to know is where the moon is going to be. And for that, I'm using this app. It's called Photopills. It's got an augmented reality feature. And right now it's telling me the moon is just below the horizon. There we go. And then by the time about 6.30, it'll crest right above this mountain here. So if those clouds move away in the next half hour, I think that's going to look amazing. Cause that right there, that is Crater Lake National Park. And with the moon coming up over the mountains, I think it's going to look incredible. Especially if we have some ambient light from the sunset, the moon glowing, it's going to look awesome. Now, there is a list of tools that I recommend having handy to make your shots look the best they can be. So let me get things uh, settled here so I can show you and then we'll go from there. I got about 20 minutes before the moon comes up. All right, this is what I brought. The first thing you're gonna need is a tripod. It's not totally necessary, but it is recommended. Uh, then is a remote. The second thing would be a remote. I bought a little remote for the Rebel and I have the other one for the R5 and the 5D Mark IV. The next thing, like I said, I wanna get pictures of the moon coming up over the horizon. So a zoom lens, the 24 to 105 and the 55 to 250. And then for later, when we try to get the details, I have the 1 to 400, and I also have a 1.4 teleconverter. So, I think that's all you're going to need. <laughs> uh, a long lens, a zoom lens, a remote, a shutter release, or the 2 second timer, 10 second timer, if you don't have a shutter, a, uh, a remote. But Alright, now let's find a composition here and let's wait for the moon. Simple. Okay, so the app was off by like that much on the phone, which is about a mile or two on the mountains. You can see it just behind the cloud all the way to the left of Crater Lake, the last peak over here, the, the rim drive. But now let me switch gears and put the long lens and try to get some footage of it moving because it moves really fast. Now I'm gonna, I did take a couple of pictures with the Rebel with the 55 to 250. Uh, I think it gets close enough to show the landscape and show everything. Um, but not that it's behind the cloud. I don't really have uh, a ton to take a picture of. <laughs> okay, so this is a little bit too close with the teleconverter. Let's remove this. I was going for the video and not for the photo, but let's do that. All right, the one thing I recommend is using live view to focus because uh, you really can get in and get the detail that you want when you zoom in. Because the moon is moving so fast, you want a fast enough shutter speed to get, the, to get it clear and not blurred. Now the sunset, the, the color is going away, the moon is getting brighter. It's looking really, really good now. One thing I learned about this little camera, you gotta do a lot of photos, or they're gonna be blurred. <laughs> All right, that was a little bit hectic. I was running around because I had this camera, that camera, I was doing time lapses, <laughs> but eventually I got a good picture of the sunset on the mountains and the moon just above the clouds. I tried with this camera, but I had to do it handheld because you were on this camera's tripod. Uh, I did use the 5D Mark IV with the 1 to 400. Got a beautiful shot of the landscape and I hope it's sharp because again, I was uh, a little hectic there. <laughs> 
But let's wait for it to get a little bit darker. I'll do a little bit more video and then we can share some of the camera settings uh, because there's a lot of them that will help you get really good moon photos. Wow, that looks cool. How close can I get with this? Oh, that's cool. Even though the stabilizer is on, I can't hold steady. So let's speed it up to 320. I could see it shaking all over the screen. The stabilizer in this lens is nowhere near as good as the one on that lens. <laughs> but anyway, no, let's take some, some video. Well, there's still a little bit of light and you can see me. Let's talk about the camera settings. So you need a telephoto lens because on a wide angle, look at how big the moon looks. <laughs> it's tiny. So a telephoto lens is really gonna make it fill the frame and look much larger than it appears. Uh, the first thing, when you're on a tripod, take the stabilizer off. If your camera has a stabilizer, take that off. You don't want those motors competing with the tripod and getting a blurry photo. The next thing you're gonna do is put your remote whether it's a wireless remote or a remote trigger like this one, uh, that's gonna help you avoid any vibration. If you don't have a remote, set the camera timer, two second or 10 second, depending on how long your setup is, you might need the 10 seconds. In this case, two seconds, this is fine. If you're shooting with a DSLR like this one, make sure your mirror is locked up. When that mirror clunks, it's gonna cause vibration and ruin your photo. Um, all those are camera settings. Then there's your aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. For moon shots on a dark sky, there's a rule called the Looney 11 rule. Sorry, my, it's cold tonight, my hands are frozen. That means aperture of F11, and then your shutter speed matches that of your ISO. So if you're shooting at a shutter speed of 200th of a second, which I recommend, then you need an ISO of 200. Now, like any rule, these are more like suggestions. You can always, you know, go around them a little bit here and there. So try it, see if it works, and then, you know, we'll go from there. Let me see what I got here. This is the Rebel. If I set it on live view, it's going to lock the mirror up. Now I'm gonna focus manually. Once I, ignore that. Uh, I'm gonna find the moon, there we go. And focus manually. So. This is the Rebel T1i and I have a, tele, a 1.4 teleconverter and the 400 millimeter lens. So right now I'm about a 900 millimeter field of view and I can zoom in and live view and get the focus as best as possible. This camera is weird. F11, 200th of a second. Go back to live view. It looks good, zoom in. Again, remember your most lenses are sharpest in the middle. So you want that in the middle so you can get the sharpest image possible. You can see the moon moving through the screen. The wind is moving the lens and the camera. So I gotta wait for the wind to stop. There's some other thing I'm gonna try and it's focus stacking on the moon. I've never done this, I've done stacking with stars, but not with the moon. I keep watching videos of people saying stack photos of the moon. I don't, in my head it doesn't make any sense, but I'm gonna try it and we're gonna see if it works. So I don't know if you can see that, but that is the, the Rebel zoomed in at 10 times on live view. So you can see the craters on the moon, how, the, how fast the moon is moving, and then also how a little bit of wind can really ruin your shot. Getting pictures of the moon is not that difficult. There are some challenges, like making sure you're stable. Stability is a must. You want that to look the best it's gonna be, and a nice solid tripod is really gonna help. Also the remote, trying to find the moon and knowing where it's gonna be, apps like PhotoPills will definitely help. They're not perfect, but they help. And then remember that the moon is moving very quickly. It's moving a lot faster than you think it is. So at fast enough shutter speed to freeze the motion, uh, it's gonna look awesome. Now, 
If you're doing this for stock photography, I got a couple more tips for you. Oh, it's cold. I was not prepared for how cold this is. If you want to get some stock photos of the moon, shoot for iconic locations like Crater Lake National Park, a rock feature, a McDonald's archway, something that's uh, something that's recognizable and try to get the moon framed or behind it or in the frame. It's going to look awesome. Now remember too that the moon has a lot of names. So when you're keywording the moon, recently we had a blue moon. Everybody was all excited about the blue moon. That just means that there's two full moons in one month. There's the harvest moon, there's the uh, buck moon, the uh, pink moon, the strawberry moon. All, each moon, it's the same moon, they just have different names for different times of the year because of the uh, farmer's almanac. <laughs> That's all it is. The moon has never been one of my favorite subjects to photograph. Remember, I was a bartender and the full moon does something to people. Ask any cop or any nurse, anybody that works in the ER, when there's a full moon, things go down. <laughs> so I've never been a big fan of the moon. I know there's a lot of people that love this stuff and love the moon and all the other things. Uh, not so much for me. The pictures look great. I love the detail, but there's something else going on up there and I don't know what it is. So this is day two of the moon photography adventure. And as you can see, I'm a little bit more prepared. I got gloves and a hat. Uh, during the spring equinox and fall equinoxes, those full moons usually tend to happen during sunset. So you got about a two day window to get the full moon with some sunlight on the landscape. Uh, so I came up to this mountaintop because I like it. And the moon's gonna come up over that peak, hopefully. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a couple more pictures today for stock. If you're shooting photos for stock, you need the landscape, you need the scene, you need the light, uh, and you don't need a very long lens. Like I showed yesterday, this one's good enough, the 55 to 250, but the camera is not the best. So you need to take a lot of pictures and hopefully you'll get a clear one. Other than that, remember to shoot raw. When you're shooting the moon, there's highlights, there's shadows. So you wanna shoot raw so you can recover that dynamic range. Stacking, stacking photos. So I did a stack of 10 and 20 photos from each camera and there was no difference whatsoever. The only time I believe stacking is beneficial is to reduce noise. These images were clear. ISO 200 was the highest I went. There was no noise in the images. Now something that did make a difference was the high pass filter from Photoshop. You load the picture into Photoshop, you duplicate the layer, Control J, you go to filters, other, high pass filter, somewhere between four, between four and eight pixels. Uh, and then you go to the blend mode and set it to overlay. And if you got too much detail, then you can just adjust the layers, transparency, and you know, play with that until it looks good. But you can bring a lot more detail this way with one single photo, instead of stacking 10 images that are really not gonna do much. If you're gonna shoot a quarter moon or a half moon or just a sliver of the moon you're gonna need higher ISO and then I could see stacking photos but for a full moon I just didn't see the, the need I didn't see any difference in my photos anyway uh, but let me go take some more pictures and I think that's it thank you very much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know if you guys have had any experiences with full moon because I'm telling you there's something weird about the full moon but anyway let's go take some photos It's weird because the weather report said today it was going to be no clouds. Beautiful, clear blue skies today. <laughs> That's why going out two days in a row, you might get a chance to get the photo you want. If you stay home, you'll never get the shot anyway. So I might get some pretty sunset colors. We'll see.